when you're pen testing, you will run into intrusion detection, firewalls, and honeypots. So you should understand a little bit about them. In talking about this topic, we have some goals that you can understand some concepts related to IDS honeypot and firewall. You can understand solutions and techniques to bypass IDSs and firewalls and learn some IDS and firewall evasion tools and understand various techniques to bypass honeypots as well as the countermeasures and how to use this in your pen testing. So we're going to talk about intrusion detection, firewalls, honeypots, IDS's firewalls and honeypot tools, evasion and evasion countermeasures, as well as using this in your pen testing. Starting with intrusion detection, and it is expected that you already have some sense of this from Network Plus. What's IDS? The whole point of IDS is to watch for suspicious traffic on either the network or a host. And you can mix and match. So where do you put intrusion detection? You, you put IDS sensors around the network that capture traffic and look for suspicious signatures and patterns and report them to a central location where you can see one sort of dashboard. So the IDS will check inbound and outbound network traffic for suspicious patterns. It'll send a signal when a signature matches a known intrusion pattern. The IDS is located between the router and the DMZ and between the DMZ and the intranet. Now you can have your IDS in a bunch of different locations. The most common places are to put it right around the firewall. In fact, if your firewall has four network interfaces, you put an IDS, a network-based IDS, a NIDS, on each of these so that you can be watching the servers here, you can be watching the internet, you can be watching uh, any DMZ um, devices, as well as the LAN. Really, you put network-based IDS anywhere where traffic can come in and out of that part of the network. How does it work? So something comes through the internet, goes through the firewall, it goes through the IDS, and the IDS compares it, just like a virus, uh, an antivirus, to signatures that it has. If there's no match, then the, uh, the traffic can go through and go into your enterprise network. If there is a match, then an alarm is sent. Now, the message is sent through anomaly detection and stateful protocol analysis. Connections from the source are cut, the packet is dropped. So how do we detect intrusions? Well, there are three basic ways. We look for known malicious traffic patterns, known signatures. It's just like how an antivirus works. We identify patterns that match a known database that signify the misuse of system resources. Or we do anomaly detection, where we basically take a baseline for two weeks of what is considered normal network traffic. And then, after that, we see if our traffic deviates from that. That sets off an alert. Or we look at protocols. And is there any usage of the protocols that's weird, like suddenly switching ports or starting without a three-way handshake or something like that? Is there any um, misuse of protocols? or weird flags raised, then those will also raise alerts. Uh, general indicators of an intrusion. You have new or unfamiliar files or programs that are being detected. You have file permissions that are changing. You have file sizes that are changing unexpectedly. Or you have rogue files that are not on a master list of approved or digitally signed files or you have files with unfamiliar names, or files have gone missing. For network intrusions, um, you have outgoing probes of services on your machine. In other words, you have traffic going out of your network. You have unusual locations connecting to your network. You have outgoing remote login attempts. So like something on the inside is trying to log in to something out in the internet, and that's weird, especially servers shouldn't be doing that. You have random data in log files that might cause a denial of service or a service crash. Some of your logs are incomplete or they're 
sus suspiciously short, or the systems are performing poorly, you have logs that are missing or have incorrect permissions, you have holes in the accounting, your graphics displays and text messages are coming in that are unusual, you have alterations to system software or config files, or systems are crashing and rebooting, or you have processes that are unfamiliar. So we have two general types of intrusion detection systems. We have network-based and host-based. So network-based intrusion detection system, NIDS. This is a box on the network, actually sensors on the network, that are listening in promiscuous mode. You put them in strategic places, actually every place where uh, network traffic goes in and out of a segment. Uh, it will detect malicious activity and it will forward that usually to a central server. Host-based, HIDS is something you install on a specific machine. It audits for events on a specific host. Now, of course, it means the system is using extra overhead just to do the monitoring. HIDS IDSs, host-based IDSs, are not interested in traffic patterns unless it impacts the host. And network-based IDS is not interested in things happening on hosts like files changing or logins, unless it is um, part of network traffic that can be analyzed. So should you have both? Yes. So that's some background in intrusion detection.